I would like to show you a technique for working three-dimensionally and seamlessly. I am making a bag. I started with a rectangle of one by one ribbing for the bottom of the bag and then I picked up on all four edges of the rectangle and worked in the round to make the sides of the bag. And the best sides of the bag are also in one by one ribbing. So here's the bottom and I wanted you to see there's nothing strange showing on the bottom of the bag. Similarly, there's nothing strange showing on the side of the bag. But when I roll the bag to the top, you can see I've divided the interior of the bag by inserting panels of one by one ribbing. And you don't see the panels from the outside of the bag, even though they're connected, and they're connected seamlessly. This technique, the first part of it anyway, is based on Rick Mondragon's sliding loop intarsia technique. Being in one by one ribbing is important because the ribs are how I will connect. So I had to count ribs and figure out which rib I needed to use. I threaded my yarn through my blunt tapestry needle. I started at the right edge of the fabric and the blunt tapestry needle went back to front through that top stitch. And then I pulled yarn through. Then I went over to the corresponding rib on the left side of the bag. This time I'm one stitch down from the top. Blunt tapestry needle again goes underneath both legs of the stitch and this time front to back and then pull, the, pull yarn through and then back over to the right edge. Now for the second loop on this side, I'm, I'm down not in the next stitch down, but two stitches down. So skip a stitch and then it's the next stitch back to front and similarly then over to the left hand edge. And once again, it's not the next stitch. You skip a stitch. It's two stitches down. And once again, front to back. So I did that spiraling yarn all the way down through the bag. And yes, there was some time where I had to sit and pull yardage through. So it is a little fiddly, but I think it's worth the effort. So I got down to the bottom of the bag and then I needed to pick up along the bottom. So I left myself enough tail to do that. This technique is something I learned from Tech Knitter and Marilyn Hastings. Both of them pick up in a, in a, a rib whale when they are doing a zipper insertion. And this is also why I worked the bottom of the bag this way rather than this way, because I knew I was going to want to pick up across the whale of ribbing. So I'll show you what that looked like. I used Gwen Bortner's reversible encasement pickup. So there's my, there's my whale of ribbing, but it turned sideways. And knitting needle goes front to back through both legs. If you are a crocheter, this is very similar to how a crochet hook goes into a stitch. So you just knit it up and then yarn over, skip the next stitch, knit it up, yarn over, skip the next stitch, knit it up, yarn over, and so on all the way across. In this particular case, it was every other stitch because this direction is row gauge, but this direction is stitch gauge. I'm in one by one ribbing, so skipping every other stitch turns out to be the correct math. But if you are in a different stitch pattern, that might not be the case. Similarly, when you were spiraling the yarn down, 
the the back to front on the right and the front to the back on the left has to do with it being in one by one ribbing. If you're in a different stitch pattern, the solution might be different. So at this point, I am all set and ready to start knitting up my panel. What I've essentially created by threading all that yarn down through the bag is I've created a, sort of a matrix of ladders, like what you would get if you had unraveled a large chunk of fabric. So I just need to knit this up, but always using the lowest rung in the ladder. So this is where it can be a little tricky. So what ends up happening typically is you have excess, and you have to make sure you don't knit with the excess that you actually use the rung, that the excess is evaporated around the corner like so. Otherwise, if you knit with this, what happens, you get all the way to the other end of the row and you realize the yarn isn't going where you need it to go. So I've evaporated the excess. I have the lowest rung. I'm going to turn the work here. And then I am just going to knit across with the lowest rung. Let me get my needle into position here. And the lowest rung. I am in one by one ribbing. So here we go. One and curl one. And just all the way across. Okay, there we are. Last last pair. Knit one and purl one. Okay, I'll turn the work back. Pull it up here and turn it around. Okay, and like I said, you need to watch out for the turning thread. So, Right here is want, where I want to evaporate the excess, so the yarn turns the corner right there, and then I have the lowest rung, and I would keep working back and forth. So, like I said, I know this is sort of a corner case, but an interesting one, and I hope if you need it, it will lead to some interesting projects and techniques. Enjoy.